Hello, Stephen Schaub here, Leader of the Fidget Revolution 2.0 here on YouTube. And today I'm going to try to teach you color science or the basic color science you need to know to make a photograph look great on your screen and match as close as possible in the print. But first, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you. And if you could support us on Patreon for any amount, that would be awesome. Thank you in advance. So let's get into color science. First off, you have to understand that all the color science is slightly flawed math. Um, there's lots of holes in the way it works. Uh, yet, what I'm the most interested in and the workaround that I have come up with over the last 30 years that I'm going to share with you today is based upon wanting to have the screen look great and then have that as close as possible match the print. Now, we're not going to get it perfect. Um, doesn't matter how much money you spend, you're not going to get it ever to match exact. That, that level of science precision just does not exist. However, you can get very close. Um, I would say with the techniques that I'm going to outline for you here in just a minute, you can get to about the 90% point, maybe 92%. To gain a little bit more accuracy, you're going to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. Um, and you're still not going to get past really 90% four ninety five percent and there is a level that you're never going to be able to get to in precision just the nature of the beast and that's fine but getting as close as possible to that threshold is our goal today so first i'm assuming you're running a calibrated monitor if you have not calibrated your monitor you need to buy a monitor calibration device to calibrate your monitor secondly i'm assuming that you're running pretty good icc profiles for your printer the reality is most of the icc profiles that are generated by paper manufacturers that you get for free are okay they're much better now than they were in years past um, if you're like me running rip software i run software by ergosoft which is amazing and i also run software by colorbyte which is also amazing they're different but both amazing um, you have a lot more control and both of those those type of printing environments are much more precise I um, mean, the ICC profiles are far better but for the most part running a stock ICC will be fine to get you pretty good color um, the most important thing to understand is that all photography is about controlled loss it's about a compression of tones and values and color to a smaller space the print um, the real world has to be compressed down to fit that color gamut, that color space of the final print. But the idea is to do it in such a way that you keep as much as you can for as long as you can, and that the final color that you're sending to the printer is as close as possible to what the printer really needs. You don't really want to set a printer a space that's radically bigger than it needs, and I'll get into that why in a minute. So my technique is I almost always use the same color space in Photoshop and in my scan, and that is Chrome Space 100. Chrome Space 100 was invented by Joseph Holmes. It's a wonderful space. I'll put a link to it. Uh, it's not free. You have to buy it, um, but it comes with what are called chroma variants. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, Chrome Space 100 is a non-linear space. That is to say the shadows are around a 1.8, but the midtones and the highlights are at 2.2 gamma. And as a result, you get a little bit of an enhanced shadow capability in terms of scanning. Um, it also helps prevent things called hue angle shifts. Hue angle shifts are where in color science, where like blue will have a tendency of shifting to purple or orange might shift to red, where you don't get an accurate color mapping. This space does an amazing job of keeping those colors as accurate as possible. So when I work in scanning, um, or if I have a digital file, I'll bring it in to Photoshop using Chrome Space. So my scanner, I've got Chrome Space 100 set up. I scan into that, into that format, and then I bring it into Photoshop. In Photoshop, as I'm working on the file, Chrome Space 100 is pretty good. Um, it, it really said, once again, holds all the, by the way, I'm not getting any kind of kickback or any of that kind of stuff from Joseph Holmes. I bought his spaces back in, God, the early 2000s and I've used them ever since then. So this is just totally my opinion. Um, there's no sponsorship here. Um, and what's nice about his color space is it has what's called a chroma variant. So what a chroma variant does is it allows you to increase or decrease the saturation of a digital file um, without changing the contrast or the luminosity. Um, so anybody who's ever gone into Photoshop and go into Photoshop right now, 
open up one of your images and go to the saturation slider and move it back or forth. What you'll notice is not only does the color go up and down, but so does the contrast. What Chrome Space does is it separates out that chroma from the luminance and it allows you to increase or decrease the amount of color in your file in tiny, tiny increments. I think it's like four or 6% increments. So it goes all the way from zero, which is normal, up to plus 99 and to minus 99. So I can sit there and dial in the exact amount of color that I want in Photoshop and be very precise about it and not affect my contrast. This is a huge advantage. I also find that by increasing and decreasing the color this way, I'm able to have very accurate color. It's actually increasing or decreasing those colors in a very uniform manner. And I find that this is very, very, very helpful. So if you ever want to know what color space I'm scanning into, it's Chrome Space 100. When I'm in Photoshop, I'm in Chrome Space 100. But when I print, it's different. Um, years ago, I wrote an article called Small Color Space Theory. Um, and what it talked about was what is the ideal ICC to send to your printer? Um, and the reality is it depends on the type of paper you're printing on. If you're working on a matte surface paper, matte surface papers have a total gamut volume. Think of something like photo, uh, photo reg by Hanamula or something like that of about 550,000. That's a pretty good size color space. I went out and I said, okay, find me an ICC color space that's about that big. What well, turns out it's sRGB. sRGB is a wonderful color space to use when you're printing to a matte surface paper because the jump between the ICC that you're sending to the printer and the printer color space is very small. You want that to be the case. If your ICC in Photoshop is huge, let's say uh, Adobe RGB 1998, and you're gonna, which has got a volume of just over a million, and if you're gonna print to a matte surface paper, once again, say photo rag, that has a, say a half a million gamut space, what happens if all that extra color is it either gets cut, compressed, whatever it needs to do to fit that smaller color space of the printer. And this is where you get into how good is my ICC and, and what type of color mapping is being done um, between the computer and the printing software slash printer. Modern printers, you know, 11 color printer, stuff like that, can produce a really huge range of tonality. But once again, I find that for matte surface papers, working in a sRGB color space as the final space. So. Let me walk you through the workflow, let me back up. I'm in Photoshop, I'm in, I'm in Chrome Space 100, I've done all of my dodging, burning, spotting, all that kind of stuff. I've increased the color or decreased the color using the chroma variants to get exactly what I want. Then, before I go to print the file, I will convert the file to sRGB if I'm printing on a matte surface paper. I do not assign. A sign is how you use the chroma variance. There's a very different thing. So if I'm in Chrome Space 100 and I'm in the neutral space and I want to say go to plus 12, which is an increase of 12% in terms of the overall color, you assign it to that profile, which is really cool. If I want to print, I have to then convert it to the other space. If you do a sign, it really messes with everything. Um, so when you go to do the, your printer profile, you want it to convert it to that space. And I always check uh, black point compensation to be uh, used. That just makes sure that your black point between one color space and another is on par. Um, so for matte surface paper, you should always print, in my opinion, from sRGB. On a glossy paper, I'll use something like Adobe RGB 1998 because you've got such a big color space there. Hold on. You've got such a big color space. I mean, uh, Canson uh, Barita Photographique, its ICC profile is like 1.1 million. It's huge. The gamut volume of that ICC is massive. So once again, I'm trying to match the space going to the printer profile as close as possible to the, the space that's the size of the ICC of the printer profile. In years past, I had a program that actually allowed me to show you this, but the program doesn't run on my Mac once I upgraded to the 64-bit version. Sorry, can't show it to you. Um, but do this test yourself. Here's what I suggest you do. And I once again, I always say test and verify everything I say here on The Revolution. Take up, open up an image, and I want you to print the image two ways. First, on a matte surface paper, that I'm assuming you're gonna work on a matte surface paper, print one image using the uh, 
uh, sRGB as the input ICC, and then print the same image again from Adobe RGB 1998. And what you're going to find is that you might see a little more color in the Adobe RGB 1998, but it's not going to be as accurate. The mapping from that larger space to the smaller space is going to be a little askew. So it's important, once again, that those spaces be about the same size. You could also do this test if you have glossy paper or satin paper loaded up. Do one print from sRGB and one print from Adobe RGB 1998. What you're going to find, same thing again, the sRGB print now is going to look flat. It's not going to have as much color. It'll be nice, but it won't be as colorful. Um, the other thing to always remember is your monitor. What ICC space or how big of a color gamut can your monitor handle? Most monitors don't do much more than sRGB. There are some monitors out there nowadays that will actually show you a full uh, Adobe R RGB 1998 color space, and that's great. If you have one of those monitors, awesome, because what you see on the screen is gonna be much more precise. But remember, we're really only gonna get it that 90% uh, perfect. I also, I put the link to the Joe Home site. I really recommend reading the information that he has there. It's really well thought out. Um, I've used this, this technique and these profiles for my students for many years, and it, it's just a, a wonderful way. So Chrome Space 100 for scanning, Chrome Space 100 as your primary space working in Photoshop, Chroma Variants to bring your color into play, and then for output, once again, matte surface paper, sRGB, glossy satin paper, Adobe RGB 1998, and then it really just boils down to how good is the calibration of your monitor and how good are the ICCs for the printer that you have. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.